So if y'all ready, I want to preach on the subject today, messy miracles. Everybody say messy. messy, messy. Yeah, don't let, don't let Facebook out, shout y'all, all right? Messy miracles. Messy, 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 messy miracles. So if you have your Bible, if not, we got it on the big screen up here. John chapter 9. We have read this a thousand times. I guarantee you, Vacation Bible School, Wanda's, GAs, all the A's that you've ever been doing in your life, you've probably heard about where this young man was born. When he was born, he was born blind. And the disciples looked at Jesus. They said, why was this man born blind? He's got sin in his life because he's blind. If he didn't do anything, his mom and daddy had to have sin in their life. And so today, I want to show you a different take on this scripture about this young man that was born blind. In John chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, I'm reading now the New Living Translation. And this is so good. How many of y'all glad to be here? I'm so glad y'all are here. Praise. Can we give God one more big old praise? Y'all just look good today. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for you. Amen. John chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. As Jesus was walking along, he saw. He saw a man who had been blind from birth. He never seen any. He never seen what you're seeing right now. He didn't know what a tree looked like. He, he didn't know what, what anything looked like. How many of you know you are blessed? If you can see, you are blessed. He said these words, Rabbi, his disciples, his, his followers, my goodness. I'm telling the church, <laughs> we don't, anyway, let me get to this. His disciples asked him, why, why, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? He had to do something wrong. It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. I love Jesus. He just calms the naysayers down. Jesus just has a way to say, no, hey, shut up. Now, I know y'all, this is Elkhorn, so y'all get ready, all right? Um, he said these words, this happened, this happened so the power of God, the power of God could be seen in him. So good. We must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming, and then no one can work. Watch this. But while I am here in this world, I love this, I am the light of the world. Jesus Christ is the salt. He is the light. He is everything that we need. Then, watch this, all of a sudden after he said, as long as I'm here, I'm the light of the world. And I love this. He, he had to be halfway from Kentucky. Then he spit. He turned, whoop. Like that. He spit on the ground, made a mud pie with his saliva, and spread the mud, spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. And he told him, go wash yourself, take a bath. And while you're taking a bath, wash your face. How many times do your parents say, wash your face while you're taking a bath? So the man went and washed, and he came back seeing. So before I preach, let me proclaim what I personally believe God has been doing in this COVID-19 season. Here, y'all read that. I, I'm telling you, this is a word that God birthed in my spirit, and I'm excited to give it to you. God has positioned, yeah, God has positioned Elkhorn. God has positioned the class of 2020. He has positioned you for a miracle, and you may not even know it. You may not even realize it, but God has positioned you for a miracle. Now, I need somebody who's born again who truly believes the Bible. You just don't read it on Saturday to study your Sunday school lesson on Sunday. you got to come a time in your life, you say, I believe the Word of God. It's real, it's factual, and I'm not backing off of it. That's the Word of God. I need y'all to believe this with me. This story happened. Yeah. It happened. It's real. Let me break it down to you like this. Here's what God spoke into my heart, and Aaron's going to put this on the big screen. If you're a note taker, y'all just graduated from school, you got to be a note taker. For God, listen, to bring something new in your life. How many of y'all want something new in your life? Boy, I do. I want something. Watch this. You better be careful. You better be careful. Watch this. For God to bring something new in your life, he has to disrupt something normal in your life. My God, that is powerful and deep right there. For God to do something new in your life, he's going to disrupt your graduation. For God to do something new at Elkhorn Baptist Church, he's going to disrupt the normal things that we see with our fleshly eyes. 
God has set us up for a miracle. Listen, my prayers at Elkhorn, this class of 2020, would never be considered or called normal people or a normal church. We say that loosely and lightly. Because listen, I'm not saying it because we got a praise band. I'm not saying it because we got 925 seats. I, I pray that we have a God normal. What is a God normal? A God normal is this. When God walks in, everything changes. Everything. You can walk into this church with a cruel, mean, sour spirit. And I'm telling you, when God shows up, love will consume you. It'll take over you. Blind eyes will come open when Jesus shows up. Lame legs will start walking when Jesus shows up. I'm telling you, the, the temperature will change in the house when God shows up. I'm telling you, that's what we need. You know, listen, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm finally to a point in my life I realize if the crowd don't get you happy, it gets you excited. God can work through a camera lens. Everything, everything changes. Everything changes when God walks in. Now, if y'all can hang with me really quick, I promise you, God's changed me. I used to be able to chase a good rabbit. I'm talking about a big, big rabbit. Now, I'm up in the zone. I'm in, my, I'm in the lane. So I want to give you three quick points. I promise you they're quick. Everybody say, you're right. I'm going to show you. Three quick points about messy miracles. Everybody say a messy miracle. A messy miracle. Number one, Jesus saw the blind man. Y'all hear me say, I'm listening. Come on. Yeah, Jesus saw the blind man. In John 9, 1, Jesus saw the blind man. I love this. Here's why I love this. Because this tells me. This tells me, class of 2020, this tells me, Elkhorn, that God cares about us. Jesus saw the blind man. God loves us, and God will come to us, listen to me, even in the midst of a mess. Most people, listen to me, want a miracle. I can ask you here today, how many of you want a miracle? And I guarantee you, 100%, everybody's hand will go up, but you don't want the mess. And I'm just telling y'all, listen to me, you will never receive a miracle from God if you don't want to go through a mess. I'm oh, hallelujah. And I know religion, I know, I know, this is the Bible Belt. And religion will tell you, I'm telling you, listen to me, you got to clean up, you got to straighten up, you got to stop smoking, chewing, and doing before you come to church. But I stopped by. 3145 East Elkin Road tells somebody that God sees you. He sees your tears. He sees when you're hurting. He sees when you're lonely. God sees you. God sees. And God, listen to me. I feel like I need to tell somebody this too because I feel this in my heart. Those who are struggling, undecided. Look, watch. I heard, I heard two or three graduates walking across, or they, they just walking across there and said, undecided. undecided. Watch this. How many of you are thankful God's undecided? The steps of a graduate are ordered by the Lord. Every step that you take in life, God's got a purpose behind the step. And listen to me, I'm gonna remind somebody, if you're struggling, if you're lonely, you're upset, you, you don't know what tomorrow holds, you know God holds tomorrow, but you don't know what your tomorrow looks like. God was looking for you before you was looking for him. Everybody say, preach that preacher. I'm glad, thank you. God was looking for you before you was looking for him. Listen, you can't save yourself. You can't keep yourself. It started with God and it's gonna end with God. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, watch this, number two. I told y'all, this is so powerful. Listen to me, because this, this is gonna be a reverse of your mindset right here. This point number two is gonna be a reverse of your mindset. Not only would, did Jesus see the man, he seen the man. The man couldn't see him. But Jesus seen the man. Number two, your problem is not punishment. Listen to me. Your problem is not a punishment. It's a platform for his power. It is not a punishment. It is a platform for God's power. And listen to me. God had to reverse my thinking on this one, Wes. God had to totally, 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 totally reverse my little mindset on this one, because why? I always thought, and I know y'all have too, because I hear this all the time. I've, what I've got, I deserve. I deserve punishment because I'm a sinner. Yeah, yeah I, I know I'm preaching all right. I made my bed, now I gotta, I gotta sleep in it. I, I didn't go to church last Sunday, so no wonder I had a bad week. And listen to me, church, all that, what I just spoke, 
is a lie from the pits of hell. All that is a lie from the pits of hell. I had a young man this week, he come to me and he was, he was down and this, that, and the other. And, and he said, Brian, he said, I, I, I'm far from God, this, that, and the other. And I don't believe God can hold on to me, this, that, and the other. And I told him, I said, so you're more powerful than God. I said, who saved you? He said, well, Jesus saved me. And I said, well, if Jesus can save you, Jesus can keep you. The Bible says this, it rains on the just and the unjust. See, y'all know the Bible. Y'all know, we know the Bible. My Bible says Jesus Christ will be known by the, the shedding of the Lamb's blood and the word of your testimony. See, some of you are in a test right now, and you got a moany, but you're going to come out with a testimony. Somebody praise God, hallelujah. Yeah, you're going through a test. Why do we think we're exempt? Why do we think that we as Christians get, are exempt? Why do we think, well, I love God. Why is this happening to me? Why is it not happening to you? Why do we think we're exempt? When, when Peter, the apostle Peter, got crucified on a cross upside down. John, John the Baptist, got put in six feet of boiling oil. No, John the Baptist, Holy Spirit just corrected me, got his head cut off. John the Revelator was the one who got put in the oil. I mean, y'all glad you can feel the Holy Ghost, but when he, he'll correct you quickly, hallelujah. Yeah, listen, everybody wants a miracle, but nobody wants a mess. And listen, I, you know what scars prove to me? Well, I've, I've, got, I've got a scar on my right arm right here. I had to have 33 stitches. You know what this scar shows me? That I'm still alive. That it didn't defeat me. That, that, that I can look down, I remember, I can see the, I can see the scar, but I, can, I, can, I remember how I got the scar, but I don't feel the scar no more. And that's what God does with your past. You know some bad decisions that you have made, but I'm just here to remind somebody today that your scars is a testimony of God's power. Somebody give God praise in here today. I'm being honest with you, man. It's God's power in your life. Your scars is a testimony of God's power where God's brought you from, that you're saved and redeemed. Watch this, y'all ready? And you're not going to hell. I get so tired of the churches, man. They, they sit there and, you mean to tell me God rescued you from the pits of hell and you can't give him praise? Uh-uh, I don't work like that. So listen to this, from this day forward, I got a challenge for you. I want you to remember this and I want you to say this because this is a different mindset. This sermon is a different mindset. Because some of you have a past and you're sitting there going, man, I messed up. I deserve that. No. We, we really don't want what we deserve. Because if that's the case, all of us would be going to hell. Yeah. But we got a God called a rescuer. And he'll save you from your sins. He'll pick you up in the midst of a scar and a battle and a COVID-19. And he'll rescue you. So I want y'all to remember this. And I, I want us to say this out loud when I, when after I say it. My problem is his platform. We're going to do it again. Y'all ready? Because listen, y'all ready? Say, everybody say, my problem. My problem. Say, my problem. Come on. My problem is his platform. See, listen, that's a, that's a different mindset. Because we think it's a mess. And God thinks it's a message. We think that we're hurt. And God says, no, no, no. I'm, I'm a healer. And I know we know this, but here's the, here's the problem with the church, y'all ready? Here's the problem with the church. It's mindset. It's mindset. You know the biggest challenge of being a pastor? is not preaching. I love to preach. I love, I love to preach. You know why? He's my best friend. I can talk about my best friend. I spend time with him. You know the hardest part about being a pastor? It's mindset. It's mindset. So here... My problem is his platform. It's not my punishment. It's his platform. And I'm going to leave you with this. And maybe this, this will help you get where you're at. Messy miracle. Everybody say messy miracle. I've got five people. This is a church. We participate here, all right? Everybody say messy miracle. Messy. All right. Maybe this, maybe this will help you then when I get to this third point. Don't let the method keep you from the miracle. This is so good. Don't 
let the method. We've always done it like that. You're, I, you, I'm telling you, I hear this all the time. Well, they've done it like this and they've done it like that. Listen, I'm telling you, don't let the method keep you from the miracle. God has always, this to me, done a lot of miracles. How many of y'all know he's a miracle worker? I mean, he, he has done a lot of miracles in his life. But why in the world? This gets to me. Here's where I studied my Bible. Why did he have to spit on the ground, make a mud pie, put it on a blind man's eye? Come on, y'all. I know y'all really want to ask that question, too. What if I told you because the religious people were looking at him and saying, what's he doing? I can't believe it's the Sabbath, and he's going to heal somebody. Boy, I'm pretty, listen, this is going to be good right here. He puts the mud on the man's eyes. The man, you got to come back next Sunday because I'm going to go part two on this about when the church, when the church was birthed. How was the church birthed? It's so good. It's got to get this though. And he said, go take a bath and wash your face. See, God healed, let me, let me go a little deeper with this. Matthew 9, 23. Everybody say Matthew 9, 23. Come on, say Matthew 9, 23. Jesus healed a blind man. He healed a blind man, and all he done, Greg, was touch his eyes. He didn't spit on the ground. He didn't make a mud pie. He didn't get him to go dip seven times in Jordan. He just said, he just boom, touched his eyes. And let me give you another one. Mark chapter 10, verse 52. All he done, Terry, this is Jesus. All he done was said, be healed. Whoa. That's it. He, he just touched the man's eyes in Matthew, and then Mark goes, Mark, be healed. And the blind man's eyes, poof. why did Jesus spit on the ground, make a mud pie, put it on his eyes, and tell him, go take a bath, and while you're taking a bath, wash your face. This story's always fascinated me, and I'm going to give it to you. Because when God gave me this revelation, I really believe, listen to me, y'all with me, say I'm with you. I'm almost done, I promise, I'm almost done. If you'll get this, it'll change your life forever. Your, 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 your problems is his platform. God is the master about taking a mess and making it a message. Anything that you're going through in your life, God's got control. Watch this. God knew that COVID-19 was going to be here. But here's the thing. What are you going to do in this season? You can be a mess. You can crumble. Or you say, you know what? He's still my redeemer. He still lives. He's still God. He's still in control. Every step I take, he... it's all right. See, God works in mysterious ways. How many of y'all? Come on. God works in mysterious ways. He does the opposite. Yes, he does. Of how we think he's going to do it. Every time. Every time. You'll think God's going to do this and he'll do that. You'll come up with an idea, and I'm not saying it's a bad idea. And God's sitting there going, oh, you think you got me, huh? Watch this. I love this. I love this so much. Here's, I want y'all to think about God's methods. Just for me. Now, this is the God that we follow. Lord, I believe in you. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe all the Bible. Okay. I want you to think about God and his methods. God takes a stick. Everybody say a stick. And splits a Red Sea. Yeah. What about this one? God makes iron float. Are, are y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Come on. God grows. This is so crazy. God literally grows a man's hand out. Boy, if that happened in churches today. I'm just trying to challenge y'all. Make y'all think. Because we think we really got God figured out. And God's going to sit there and go, surprise. I'm, listen, I'm going somewhere. And then God takes his spit. <laughs> and he spits on the ground, makes a mud pie, puts the mud on the man's eye, tells him to go wash his face. Listen to this. Here's where it gets good. Here's where it gets good. So yesterday, I said, I want this sermon to become a reality. Because see, we read the Bible and say, boy, that was a good vacation Bible school story. No. Jesus went out. 
<laughs> the man was there and the disciples were there. They were saying, why is this man blind? Was it his sin? Was it his mother's, his father's sin? Why is he blind? And God goes, <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, are, I bet my daughter right now is at home going, Daddy is nasty. <laughs> it's, uh, I got one more. Hold on. And I imagine, are y'all okay? Please come back May 31st. <laughs> y'all will remember this one. Because, see, we just read the Bible. Well, blessed be his name. Mm. <laughs> it's really nasty, y'all. I'm not lying, it's nasty. But messies are, miracles are messy. See, we think God's going to show up like a Baptist. <laughs> we think God's going to show up as a first come in the United Methodist Church, Presbyterian. No, 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 no. Anybody want I need help. Anybody want to help me? <laughs> Nobody will never pray at this altar right there. Anyway. It's so. I like doing this to me because I'm from Kentucky. Why do we question what God does? See, I, listen to me. I imagine his disciples were acting probably the way we're, we're acting right now. It's nasty. It's messy. It's not the way that we think God's going to come in and, and heal people. But we read it in the Bible. We teach it in Sunday school. And all of a sudden, God says, let me show you, Brian. Let me show y'all something so powerful. When I was out there yesterday in that field and I was digging for dirt, and I, I picked this up in the bone, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, God says, Brian, what you're holding in your hand is a miracle. 2020, Clay, I'm telling y'all, y'all are a miracle. And if you're not careful, I feel the Holy Ghost. You're going to look at the dirt and say it's useless, and God's going to go, I'm going to wash my hands because it's, it, it's bad. Y'all ain't going to forget it, I'm telling you. See, here's what God said. Some of you want a miracle, but you don't want the mess. Some of y'all want God to use you. God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Be careful because it's going to be a mess. Preaching is nothing like I thought it was going to be. Pastoring is nothing like I thought it was going to be. Church is nothing. I read Acts chapter 2 and, man, I see miracles. And I see 3,000 people get saved on one day and 5,000 the next day. And fingers grow out and arms grow out. And listen to me, I come to the point, I'm going to make a declaration today. Every word in that Bible is fact. It's truth. It still works today. And sometimes God will take a dirty, nasty mess and use the least thing in his body. And God says, I'm going to use the least thing to make it the best thing. Whew, my God, how many of y'all glad to come to church today? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You want to be careful. Listen, you want a miracle, but you don't want the mess. Listen, Jesus Christ, Beth, literally, I better almost spit on the <laughs> Miss Kelly would have got upset about that one, Terry. But he did. See, when I read the Bible now, 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 because I used to be a good little church boy. You know, all you got to do is put a suit on, carry a KJV, and go to Sunday school, and everybody's saved. Y'all didn't know that? Chris, there's something different. 
God, I feel the Holy Ghost. God's saying this. If you would just be the dirt. Listen, what God just spoke to me. Y'all know what we're made out of anyway, right? God says, if you would just let me use the dirt in your life. If you just let me use the thing, the mess, the trial, the tribulation, the test in your life, I'll turn it around. I'll put my power. I'll put my spin. I'll do whatever I got to do, but I'm going to stand you up in Jesus' name. Somebody give God praise in here today. Just don't sit there today. Give God a big old shout here today. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you know why? Some of y'all, I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Spirit. Listen to me. Some of you, oh, oh by the way, happy graduation. This is what God laid on my heart, and I'm going to preach it. Because some of you are getting ready to get into a man. I don't know why God sent me to this stupid school. I don't know why God don't elevate me and promote me and put, put me somewhere. Maybe he's still making a mud pie. See, here's what. Praise him, you guys come on. I got to land this plane. Some of you, y'all with me, so I'm with you. I'm wrapping it up. Some of you would rather smell good and look good than be good and feel good. I'm gonna say it again, y'all didn't get that. Some of you, you're too pretty for a miracle. <laughs> I'll tell you what, God ain't gonna put no mud on my neck on us. Okay. All right, go ahead. Listen, I've been around church all my life. In my mother's womb. I know. Are you willing to get messy? Are you willing to take a hit? Are you willing to take a licking and keep on ticking? Are you willing to let God look at the dirt in your life? Come on, somebody. He spit. And that got my curiosity. Of, why did he do that? Because there was religious people, the church was looking, there was naysayers. Why did he have sin? He got to have sin. He's like, God's like, no, 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 no. I'm getting, here's what God just spoke to me. And you, don't, you don't have to believe me, you don't have to trust, oh, I don't care. They were asking why. Dana, this is good, you're a note taker, listen. They were asking why. And God said, watch. They were asking why. Why is he blind? Why is this going on in his life? What kind of sin? Why is he like this? And God's sitting back going, watch what I do. Watch what I do. Watch what I do. Watch what I do. You know, all right. He's been blind since birth. And God spits on the ground. And I can just see in my spirit him, him kneeling over. The blind man couldn't see him. The church could though, Wes. The church, feel the Holy Ghost. The church was asking why? God, why is this COVID-19 going around? God said, I'll tell you why. I'm getting ready to show up and my power is going to be displayed on earth. <laughs> so some of you, you're asking God why, 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 God, why, why can't I pay my bills? Why can't this happen? Why don't you, won't you turn, look, change your attitude, change your attitude. Let God make a mud pile of that. Let God take the dirt in your life. The thing that nobody wants to talk, here's what bothers me about churches. We come in here, we got, we got dirt in our life, dirt in our life, dirt in our life. And God said, if you will give me dirt, if you'll give me dirt, I'll show you my power. You can ask for prayer requests, and they can walk in. I'm telling you, they'll walk in, and they're falling over their bottom lip. They're fussing and cussing out in the parking lot. And they'll walk in, I'm ready for my miracle. God says, no, 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 no. You haven't given me the dirt. So we, we got a, a dirty decision to make today. <laughs> Facebook, we got, a, we got a mess. The church has become a mess. And I wrote this down. Some of you, you don't know 
how he's going to do it. But here's my words. You ready? You don't know how God's going to do it, but watch. You don't know how God's going to put your marriage back together, but watch. You don't know how you're going to pay your bills, but watch. You don't know how God's going to heal you, but watch. Quit asking God why. Y'all look at me, because listen, we live in a time, in a generation that's asking why, 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 why. And here's what bothered me, Greg. The disciples seen God take, take, take the fish and take the loaves. He divided it. He fed, he fed all them thousands of people. They seen God and grow a man's fingers and his hands out. Then they seen Peter walk on water. They seen all the miracles. And they still ask, why? I don't know. I wrote this down. How God's going to turn it around for you. 2020, y'all think y'all were accidentally the class of 2020. It's what you do with your why to make your why a what and let God do it. Watch this. I don't know how Elkhorn's going to look on May 31st. I don't know what she's going to look like, but watch. I don't know. We better get this house ready. Because I believe, and I need y'all to believe, we're two or three touching on it and agreeing, God is in the midst. God is here right now. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless your dirt. God is the master of taking dirt. So, those three points about a messy miracle, messy miracle, messy miracle, messy miracle, messy miracle. God spoke this to me. Look. If I were to ask you, here's mindset change. Here's how you change your mindset. What is this? Some people would say dirt. God says a miracle. God says a miracle. God says a miracle. We see dirt. God says a miracle. Hallelujah. I'm not changing because you're here. Because God's done proof to me He can preach through a camera lens and reach thousands. But if five people show up, I'm telling you, it don't mean God's going to be here. So I'm asking you this morning, look at your life. What do you see, dirt? Do you see a problem? Or do you see a miracle? That's a miracle, Wes. I can take one seed, put it in dirt, Water it. And whatever is planted will, will grow. Y'all don't want to miss next Sunday. Because I'm going to show you by an illustrated sermon how the church was birthed. And you don't want to miss it. Watch. I did my dissertation on it, and God still speaks about it. Because church was not birthed from man. If I told you it's birth from dirt. So I'm through. Done. I just want you to realize you're at the right place at the right time. That God will take your dirt and God will heal you. You can't outrun God. You're not fast enough. You're not fast enough. You're not fast enough. You think you can hide, but He'll walk through the garden. You, you think that you've done gone. I feel this, I feel the Holy. You think that you've messed up and you messed up and you messed up and you messed up. And I know y'all think y'all are here for graduation day, but it's time for the church to graduate. Time. It's time. Time. Chris Cole, God wants to take your dirt. He wants to put a guitar in your hand. He wants to elevate you and watch you grow. But do you see dirt or do you see a miracle? All I'm saying is this, Elkhorn, y'all ready? May 31st is going to be messy. Praise God, I couldn't wait to say that. Messy, messy church. Me well, Brian, that's not the method. I, watch, read, read my little. I don't care. I'm to a point in my life. I'd rather satisfy God than satisfy man. Or the way they think it should look, or the way that they... How's that worked? How's that work, guys? How's that work? 
So I'm asking you today, do you see dirt or do you see a miracle? Dirt or a miracle? His disciples, the, the religious people were there. They were asking why. And God was sitting there going, watch this. Elkhorn, we've asked why. Watch this. So, if this is here, you today, I love you. Praise God. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for being here. But I'm going to ask you a question. Where are you at today? Or, watch. We, we don't get good to get God. We get God to get good. Well, I'm going to straighten my life up. And this, how's that working out for you? We don't get good to get God. We get God to get good. So I'm just telling y'all today, you're, you're at a real place that loves you so much. We don't want nobody to die and go to hell. Nobody dies and goes to hell. Listen to me, because I'm, I'm one of these type of preachers. I'm going to tell you the truth. Watch. It's more than saying your ABCs and sitting down. Watch. If you, if you can let Jesus Christ come into your life and never feel it, never transform, but you keep conforming to the world, watch this, you didn't transform. How do you know if you're a Christian? The light come on. You're transformed. You won't want to be mean. You won't want to cuss people out. You won't want to. Tough boy. You know, even with the, I can look through the camera lens and they, they don't, they don't fuss back. So here's what I know. Today, some of you feel like dirt. Because you're basing your life on your past. And God says, I'm getting ready to take your dirty mess situation. And I'm going to add the least of me, my spit. And I'm going to heal you. <laughs> I'm going to bless you. I'm going to restore you. The best is yet to come. Your future is a whole lot brighter than your past. I know your past is the past and you made tons of mistakes. And we've all got, watch this, y'all ready? We've all got dirt in our lives. But I don't look at dirt no more like dirt. And it just happened yesterday. Yesterday at 8.30 at nighttime out in the field, sitting there digging up, digging up, digging up. And God says, what do you see? Well, God, I'm holding dirt. He said, no, 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 no. You're, you're holding a miracle. Every one of you right now, hallelujah, in Jesus Christ's name, you are a miracle straight from God. You are a miracle straight from God. You didn't save yourself. You can't keep yourself. But when God stepped out, watch, God seen you before you seen him. So, so I want to say a prayer. Now I believe somebody's in here right now. I, I do. I, I don't care if there's five people here. I'm not one of these type of priests that go, everybody's saved. Everybody got the word. Everybody's going home. Everybody's going to bloom. Everybody's going to prosper. No, no, no. Do you see dirt? Or do you see a miracle? Because some of you, y'all know what I was saying? The world hands you a lemon. And what are you going to do with it? Are you going to make some lemonade? Or are you just going to sit and go, oh, i got another lemon. I probably deserve it. Or are you going to say, no, no, no. God's getting ready to change something in my life. Class of 2020, watch. I believe with all my heart, and I'm not just saying this, y'all have the greatest miracle in y'all's life right now. But what are you going to do with it? Do you see dirt? I can't believe. I can't believe we didn't get to walk across the stage. I can't believe we didn't get to graduate. What, you did? Going to Western Kentucky. Hilltopper, baby. Ain't nothing like Hilltopper football. Five years, they're going to be number one. Y'all watch and see. You say, Brian, was that prophecy? In my book. <laughs> but listen to me. Y'all ready? Do you see dirt? Do you see a miracle? I'm going to say a prayer. If you want this Jesus, I'm talking to you guys. I'm talking to Facebook. If you want Jesus Christ, I'm sure he's ready to give you himself. So I'm going to say this prayer. We're out of here. We're done. Y'all done great today. But we, I'd, I'd be crazy if I, if I preached the word and didn't give an invitation. How many of y'all know there's churches out there they'll preach the word and the pastor walks off the back of the stage and they go home? Horrible! 
I believe God spoke today, amen. How many of y'all got a word today? How many of y'all can testify that God's done something in your life? God has blessed you. God has restored you. God has saved you. God has healed you. God has done something good in your life. So here we go. I look some of you, I look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call this out. Some of you are looking at me and saying, I'll be glad when that boy shuts up. You might as well leave. I, watch, I am done playing games. I'm so done. Do y'all realize every 60 seconds, three people die? Every 60 seconds, three people die. Does that bother you? So I'm going to say a prayer. If you're ready for Jesus Christ to come into your dirt, <laughs> if you're ready for Jesus to come into your dirt and to plant a big old oak tree and to watch you bloom, I'm going to ask you to say this prayer. Y'all ready? If you want Jesus, say, Father God, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that God raised him from the dead. And I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord, as my Savior. Lord, take me, take my dirt, and God, use me for your glory. Show me your power. And I pray this prayer believing that today I'm saved, I'm born again, and I'm on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Did anybody here today as a senior, as a guest, say, Pastor, I said that prayer today. I said that prayer. Anybody here, you just wave your hand and say, I said that prayer. Anybody? Anybody? Everybody's born again, right? Praise God then. It's good. Facebook, if anybody on Facebook said that prayer, I want you to call 789-2113. I want you to get online and tell Pastor Drew you made that decision. Amen. We here at this church love you. We praise God for you. Next Sunday, May 31st, 10 o'clock. Don't miss it. This is going to be part two. I promise you. It'll